Okay, welcome back. We've got a problem here that was sent to us through email, and that is we're asked to perform this integration, the integral of 1 over the quantity square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Now that looks pretty tough. I'm not sure how we would start with that, but we've got a recommendation here, and that is we're going to do a trigonometric substitution. So whenever we see something like the square root of a squared minus x squared, where a is a constant, could be 5, could be 1, could be pi, we're going to try this trigonometric substitution. And so we don't have anything here in the numerator except dx, and so some of our other techniques might not work as well. So step one in this process for this trigonometric substitution is to say a is going to equal I'm sorry, x is going to equal a times the sine of t, where a is just a constant. In this case, I'm going to set it equal to 1 because that value is 1. So if this were something like 25, I might set a equal to 5 or something of that nature. Okay? So whatever that value is, I want to set a equal to the square root of that initial constant. So in this case, it's 1, and the square root of 1 is 1, so I'm going to use a equals 1. And if I have this, then I also need to compute dx, because dx is part of this equation as well. So if x is equal to 1 times sine of t, then dx is equal to 1 times the cosine of t times dt. And I'm going to need this term in the future. So let's carry this forward. Right now we've got the equation right over here, and that says that our original equation, when we perform this substitution, is 1 over the quantity square root of 1 minus sine squared of t times our dt term, which is cosine t dt. And so this is our new equation after we've performed this substitution. Step two in the process is to recognize that this denominator is something special. And we should kind of latch on to the fact that that is something we, we've seen. What is it actually? Well, here's an identity that we will run into again and again, and that is sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. And so when we see this, we can rearrange the terms. Therefore, the square root of 1 minus sine squared is equal to the cosine. So we can take this entire radical and replace it with just cosine in this case. So we're going to perform that substitution, and here we have the substitution. We have cosine t dt in the numerator, and in the denominator we're just going to put in this substitution, cosine of t. Well, what do we find? We find that the two cosines cancel each other out, and we're just integrating dt. Well, that's about the simplest integral we're going to find in calculus, so the answer is t plus some integration constant. But we're not finished, because the answer wasn't supposed to be in terms of t, it's supposed to be in terms of x. So we have to undo our substitution. So step three in this process is right here. We need to substitute back in order to get x. Well, we said originally that x is equal to the sine of t. So what is t? t is equal to the arc sine of x. Now, don't be confused by the notation here. This exponent, minus 1, is not implying that this is 1 over sine, it's implying we're taking the arc sine of x. And you want to be careful on that because it can be a little confusing. If we go ahead and do this, we find that our integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx is actually equal to the inverse sine or arc sine of x plus some integration constant. So we can see that trigonometric substitution simplified our integration immensely and allowed us to proceed with something or we didn't have a lot of good ideas here other than this substitution. There, some of our other techniques were probably not going to help us in this case. So I hope that helps, and if you have any other problems, please send them to MidnightTutor.com.